Hello, friends. I'm Heidi with Oni Go Stamping, and welcome to my craft corner. I am really excited about the stamp set that I'm going to share with you tonight. <laughs> it is one that caught my eye right away in the new mini catalog, and uh, I just think it's hilarious. I don't know what it is about little faces. <laughs> Little faces that you can put on, you know, food or plants or whatever, but they always crack me up. And tonight's stamp set has little faces, which I love. And of course, I had just started like, you know, filling time and cleaning up some stuff. And then I was like, oh, wait, she's time to go live. <laughs> so let me swat, switch the cameras around so we can start, start, I can't even speak today. So we can start taking a look at the Daco Fiesta stamp set. Hello, Karen. Oh, I forgot to do my big welcome. Hello, everyone. If you are here and watching, go ahead and leave me a comment. Let me know when you're watching, where you're watching from. Let me know um, how you feel about tacos. <laughs> and if you're watching the replay, welcome to you as well. I hope that you'll leave me a comment and let me know that you were here watching the replay. And, you know, you can let me know what you think about tacos, too. So it's not Taco Tuesday. It's not Tuesday, but it could be Taco Thursday. <laughs> I think Taco Thursday works. I mean, is there ever a wrong time for tacos? I don't think so. <laughs> so you love tacos. Yay. Hello, Kathy and Karen and Anne. Welcome. And Jude. Oh, I'm so glad y'all are here. All right. So here is the Taco Fiesta stamp set in the new mini catalog. Sorry, I'm just looking at my camera, I'm making sure it's clean. It looks a little, it looks a little fuzzy. I'm going to grab... I'm going to grab, I did this before I started, but I'm just going to just gonna give it a little more swipe. I think maybe that's just as good as it gets. So, all right. Lena, you love tacos too? <laughs> all right. So here's the Taco Fiesta stamp set. This is on page 48 of the mini catalog. And you can see, I'm going to pull out the stamp. You can see their samples right there, which are pretty darn cute. <laughs> love them. All right. And then here is the stamp set. And not only does it have the little faces, it's got like five little faces you could put on your items here um, that you could put on you know, your chip or your taco or your guac or your pepper, or I guess the pinata doesn't need an additional face or you know the, um, the cactus or the burrito or the um, avocado. So lots of different things you can do. <laughs> taco any day. Yes, Nicole, I agree. Um, so you have the little faces, which I adore. I love the little faces, especially this little mustached guy. Um, and then we have some great um, punny sentiments in here too. So you have you spice up my life, your nacho average friend, holy guacamole, it's your birthday, spectacular, long time, no taco. <laughs> so I think those are really fun too. And you guys, I saw the funniest card yesterday. I think it was it was made by somebody named... Melissa, who goes by, I think, the stamp doc. So definitely going to give her credit because I never would have thought of this. And I, I thought it was just, I thought it was hilarious. I don't have the card to show you, obviously, but let me show you the stamps that she used. Because <laughs> it was just, it was too funny. All right. So she used the taco fiesta. She used um, the little guacamole bowl and some chips and the sentiment that says, holy guacamole, it's your birthday. And she used them with... Let me show you this. She used that with the Rejoice and You stamp set. She used the little Jesus face <laughs> and made it so he's like looking at the guacamole and the chips and it says, holy guacamole. <laughs> I just about died. I just about died when I saw it. I thought it was so funny. I don't know. Maybe it's me. I have too irreverent of a, of a uh, sense of humor or something. I don't know. <laughs> you saw it too and thought it was funny. Oh my goodness. All right, let's get started stamping. I've spent too much time chit-chatting about uh, guacamole and tacos. So I'm going to start with a piece of crumb cake cardstock, just eight and a half by five and a half, and I've scored it at four and a quarter. So we'll go ahead and give it a good squish with our bone folder. So there's our card base. And now I want to start by doing just a little bit of stamping, and I'm going to just do some stamping with some crumb cake, all right? Just doing crumb cake on crumb cake, and we're going to stamp some, some little peppers on here and some big peppers. So I'm going to start by stamping some big peppers, and I'm just going to kind of stamp them 
like in this area. So I have this in mind. I want my peppers to kind of fill in this area up to about like here, right? So up to about there, not all the way across and just in this area. Kind of odd, but in the end, it will make sense. So let's just do that one there. That overlaps. I think those aren't even gonna show, so it's okay. And then there's also a little pepper. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in with some little peppers and just turning them this way and that. Oops, those got a little bit close too, but there we go. We just have some, some peppers on there, some little peppers. You know what? Now I'm looking at this going, you know, I think I want, I want just a little bit further down. So let's just add just a little bit more. There we go. So there's our peppers. Just a little bit of tone on tone to have a little bit of pepper background. And now let's go ahead and get ready to do the rest of the stamping. I am going to use a couple of different um, die sets tonight. I'm going to start with the not this one. Let me start with the stylish shapes. We'll get to that one later. So we're going to start with the stylish shapes. And I'm going to use this circle. Is that right? Yep, that's right. We're using this circle. So not the biggest one, the second to the biggest one. And I'm going to cut this out of some basic white. So I just have a little piece of basic white here. I'm going to pull out my mini boss machine. My mini cut and emboss machine. You can kind of see it. We're going to open up its little doors. It doesn't quite fit in there. I'm going to set that aside for just a minute. Um, and let me pull in the plates for this. So I have the number one plate and then the number two plate. And I'm going to add my piece of cardstock on that and then my die and then a second number two plate. And then we will run this through our mini machine. I'm just going to try to hold that and get those nice and straight in there and get them all lined up. And then kind of push and get that started. Hello, Julie. And I'm just going to roll that through. You can see my hand. Let's move that down. There we go. Coming out the other side. And that gives us our little, little circle. Now, don't forget, if you want to get the best deal on Stampin' Up! during celebration, just like every time of the year, it is the Stampin' Up! starter kit. But during celebration, you can add the uh, mini cut and emboss machine. You can get it either in the white like I have or in a blue color, boho blue, for half price, for $30. You can add it to your starter kit. Um, so then your starter kit ends up being $129 um, instead of $99. But you get, a, you get a half price mini cut and emboss machine. How awesome is that? Oh, Letitia, no worries that you're late. We just started. We were laughing about tacos earlier. So I have, oh, you know what? I almost forgot. I almost did this wrong. Oh, no. All right, what do I do with my stamp set? There it is. You guys, it is such a mess up here. Now I'm throwing things around my room. <laughs> it doesn't work properly for you. Uh-oh. I am sorry to hear that. Um, sometimes it can be a little bit hard to get started. And I will show you on the next one um, what you can kind of maybe do to help with that problem. So we're going to use it again in a second. All right, so I have a sombrero, but if you want to tell me how it doesn't work for you, I can try to help you. I have a little sombrero. I'm going to start. I am going to put the sombrero over here because I actually, I want to put the sombrero on my cactus, all right? But I want it to kind of come down over part of the cactus. So what I have done is I have stamped a little sombrero on a piece of sticky note. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to cover up the sombrero that I just stamped. And then we're going to take our little cactus and we're going to just stamp him right there. And then when we pull off the sticky note, it looks like our cactus is wearing his sombrero. <laughs> Why are your Taco Fiesta rubber stamps? Why are they rubber stamps? Are they like not clear stamps? I'm confused by the question. 
you have to you have to tell tell me more about why the taco fiesta rubber stamps so yeah the mini cut emboss can you tell me how the mini cut emboss isn't working for you um because if you can describe that i might be able to tell you <laughs> it's a mini mask okay so there we go we have put our little sombrero on on our cactus. I'm trying not to get too caught up in the comments, but when you guys have questions, I always want to try to answer them. It won't catch for you. Okay. Yep. And you've tried offsetting the plates. All right. Um, it might just be that, um, yeah, I don't know. It does take a little bit of force and you kind of have to push. You have to push, which can be a little bit hard because the, the machine wants to move and you got to kind of push from the end and hold it and crank. Um, so it's a little bit tricky. All right, so I'm gonna color in, I'm using some granny apple green. The Stampin' Blends in granny apple green. I'm gonna come in with the uh, dark granny apple green and we're gonna add some shading. So down, you know, towards the bottom where we'd get more shade. And then maybe up here under his sombrero. And then over here, we'll add a little bit more. And then we're going to come in with the light granny apple green, and we're just going to give that a little bit more color. And this is just going to make that blend together a little bit better. There we go. Do that over there, too. And there we get some nice shaded cactus, right? There's our granny apple green. Now I want to come in with, yeah, you might have to contact Stampin' Up. Let me show you what I mean when, when I do the next one. I'll try to explain it a little bit better. All right, this is the light, daffodil delight. I'm going to color the top part of his hat in the light daffodil. And then add a little bit of the dark daffodil. It's kind of, you know, I want to help you like figure out how to get it to work. It's kind of hard sometimes when I'm not like there to actually see what you're, what you're doing. It's hard to, it's hard to make suggestions. All right. So there's the top of his hat. And now I want to grab my Poppy Parade ones, and we're gonna color the bottom of his hat, add a little bit of extra color to it. Just coming in first with the light, and then I'm gonna come in with the dark. A little bit brighter. And then I have this thing. I don't like to have just a floating, a floating image. <laughs> I don't know. I like to know that it's um it's anchored to something. So we're gonna do a couple things here. I am first going to come in with my light crumb cake, and I'm gonna add a little bit of ground. Just adding a little bit of ground in there. Actually, I'm gonna bring this down just a little bit, give them a little bit more shadow. All right, and we're gonna grab my, uh, you've been using your old Big Shot? Well, that works too. The mini one's just nice to take like when you go someplace, right? It's just nice and handy because it's lightweight, but I think the lightweight, the lightweight is both a good thing and I think what makes it a little bit more challenging to use. So I just came in with my color lifter and went back over that and that's gonna help lighten up that shadow just a little bit. Then I'm gonna grab my light pool party and I'm gonna add some pool party up here to add a little sky. around him. And 
I'm just gonna kind of, I'm just giving myself like, I don't know, a, a guideline here of where I want the edge to be. So I don't want it to be like a perfect edge, but I do kind of want to have a basic shape to it. I don't want it to be too crazy. Hopefully that makes sense. So there is a little bit of blue and then I'm gonna come back with my color lifter again. Make the crowning look easy. It's pretty easy. You just you just color. <laughs> just add a little color in a line. I mean, it takes a little practice. You gotta try it a few times. So I'm gonna come back in with my color lifter and color over that pool party. And again, this is just gonna help blend it out, lighten it up just a little bit because we don't want it real dark. Which is why I don't want to, you know, go over and do a bunch of shading or anything because I don't want it to be um, too dark. So there is our little, our little cactus. But now if the cactus is wearing a hat, what does that mean? Uh, it means that the cactus needs a face, <laughs> right? If the cactus is wearing a hat, well then obviously he needs a face. So I'm using my favorite face give this dude some awesomeness. There we go. Now he has a little mustache. <laughs> Isn't he fun? Ah, so much fun. I don't know. I just love it. <laughs> I think I'm just a kid at heart some days. Not all the time, some days. All right, so now we have our cactus. Oh, actually, I'm going to do oh, just a little bit more stamping. I'll put that away. I have a little piece. I just have a scrap of basic white. And somewhere in the chaos of my table. Isn't that cute? Thanks. I'm glad you guys like it as much as I do. All right. I have the little sentiment that says, you spice up my life. I'm just going to stamp this on a little piece of scrap piece of basic white. Oh, thank you, Yolanda. Yolanda. Yep, Fonda, you're right. I put a face on it, didn't I? You guessed it. I'm going to guess that you guessed it before I did it. So I'm just going to trim that off and I'm just going to fussy cut around this. I'm going to cut the bottom straight, straight across. And then we're going to make the top a little bit less straight, I guess we can say, and make it curvy. I'm going to actually like cut around things on the top. So, and I'm just leaving a little bit of a border, not doing, you know, not doing real fussy here. There's my sentiment. And I'm just going to set that aside for just a minute. <laughs> Thank you, Nicole. All right. So there's my sentiment. It just looks like that. I'm going to set that aside. We'll get rid of my scraps. All right. So we're moving. We are moving along. Next. I'm going to use some pattern paper on here. Now, let me show you the pattern paper. I'm going to use the Regency Park pattern paper, which is all this floral. Look at this. I don't know. Floral? Look at all that floral. Well, don't forget that the back has all these fabulous designs that are just designs. And look at this one. Look at this gorgeous Mango Melody polka dot. This is going to be perfect, perfect for our little dude here. So that's what I used. And I actually, I already cut a piece. This is two inches by five and a half inches. And this is going to go on some poppy parade, all right, to match his little hat. See how it's going gonna, it's gonna to match his hat. But I'm going to cut one edge of my poppy parade. And for this, I'm going to use the basic border size. Sometimes, you guys, I don't know about you. But I forget to use some of these very basic die sets that I have. I forget that they're there. And I'm like, wait, I need to, I need to pull that out and use it. So I'm going to use the basic border size. And there is this great die in here that just makes like a stitched zigzag. And that's the one we're going to use. So let me pull in my plates again. And we'll talk about, we'll talk about die cutting some more. So I got my plates. I got my one and my two. I'm going to put, let's flip that over. I'm going to put my paper on here. 
And then I'm going to put my die along this edge. Now, this is probably going to be hard to start. Well, it might be hard to start, start because it's going very straight on. And I do want to put a little bit of washi on this because I'd like it to stay straight if I can. I don't want it to go crooked. All right, so I'm just putting a little bit of washi on there. Now, let me show you what I meant by offsetting the plates. I know that um, I'm not sure who was talking to me, but somebody, because I think, I think it was somebody on Facebook and it just said Facebook user. And that's why I can't remember. Yep. So I'm not sure who it is, but let me give you some suggestions. So by offsetting, it means to put the top and the bottom plate kind of not in the same spot. And I'm actually going to put the top plate a little bit further forward. Okay. And that sometimes can help it catch. And then what you got to do, so you do need to make sure that these sides are very, very lined up straight. All right. If they get off a little bit, um, your cutting plates, they can get caught in the machine. So I'll make sure those are good and lined up. All right. And then you're going to slide it in and then you have to push. So your hand back here, you kind of have to give this a push. And this is why I'm saying it's a little bit hard um, because your machine wants to move. But you got to give it a little bit of a push back here to get it started. And then it will usually catch. And then you can move it and put your hand on top. So I don't know if that helps or not, but that's how I do it. All right. So that gives us a nice zigzag edge, just like that. And the other one does too. So you could actually take this and use it on another piece. So you are very welcome showing you how to use these. I love them. They're so much fun. So take that off, set it aside. Now, I'm going to put this on here. And I actually want this to come like all the way to the edge. Okay. And it looks like the cutting was a little bit off. We'll fix that too. Um, but I don't want it to be this wide on this side. So we're going to come in here. And you know what? I think I think what happened is maybe my zigzag got off a little bit. Maybe we got multiple problems going down. But we're going to just line this up. I'm going to go ahead and adhere this with my multi-purpose glue. <laughs> All right. We'll put a little bit of multi-purpose glue on here if I can get it started. And I like to keep my glue like really touching the, the uh, piece of paper because I don't want it to come out too fast. I don't want to get too much on there. It's all gushy. So we're just going to line that up. I'm going to just put that down to try to get that really straight down there. All right, so that piece is on there. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, put this on here. You're going to try that again. Oh, good. I'm glad. I'm going to put this on here. And I'm just looking, you guys, I'm not measuring this at all. I am just looking and I can see that the cut line on here, um, I can see where it is in relationship to the edge of the, the uh, pattern paper. And I'm just gonna cut, just winging it, just eyeballing it. <laughs> so if you wanted to, you could, if you didn't want to eyeball it, you could actually use two pieces. So you could take a small piece like this and put that on one side and then cut a small strip and put that on the other side. Um, and then you wouldn't have to like eyeball it like that. I'm just gonna trim off, oh, let's use my scissors. It kind of bugs me. I, it bugs me when I don't cut right. I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's just a little bit, oh, that red is just sticking up just a little bit over the top. It drives me crazy. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to just get my scissors right up against the pattern paper and just trim off that little bit of poppy parade. Sometimes it's hard to get that teeny tiny about little bit amount um, in your paper trimmer, which is why I just did it with scissors. All right, we got that. We're gonna add our embellishments before we put this on. So we're gonna add some ribbon. I have the burlap ribbon. This comes in a two pack with the red. I'm not gonna use the red this time. I thought about it and I can't decide if this has a good side and a bad side. I don't know, I can't decide. I can't choose, so we're just doing it. All right, so I'm just gonna put it over the top here. I'm just gonna take my snips and just snip off the end. All right, and then I keep, I keep tape on my desk because you always need tape. So I keep tape on my desk. I'm just gonna flip that around to the back and tape it down. And we'll do that with this one too. 
and that just adds that super easy on the back, just like that. And now we're going to go ahead and put this on our card front. All right, so this is going to come in here and go on our card front right here. Isn't that fun? <laughs> so go back to our multi-purpose glue. Run some up this edge. There we go. And then this. Come in here. And we're just going to make that little kind of zigzag down the edge there. There we go. Super fun. Try to get it straight. That's why I like the multi-purpose glue because it can wiggle it a little bit. All right. And now our cactus is going to come in here. We're going to pop him on the top here. If I can find my dimensionals, there they are. Let's put some dimensionals on our little cactus. Pull those backs off. Zip, zip, zip. And he's going to go right up here. Just like that. All right. And then we're going to add, actually, I'm going to wait to add the sentiment until we add the rest of our embellishment. So I am using the uh, twine. <laughs> You guys have seen me. I use the twine all the time, right? So I'm going to take a piece of twine. I'm not going to quite tie it. I'm just going to kind of put it in that shape so I know how long to make it, cut it off. And then I just want, I want two pieces of the twine. So this twine just pulls apart really easy. Now you could definitely use linen thread instead. I like the twine because it's a little more rugged. It looks rough which when I think of cactus, cacti, I think of rough, right? We're gonna think of cowboys and westerns and the desert and tumbleweeds. So I just like the, the kind of the fuzziness, right? Can you see that? It's just fuzzier. That's why I go with the twine. The twine and I have become besties. I use it on everything now. If you, if you have watched me a lot, you know that. <laughs> you, you're probably sick of me telling you how to pull apart your twine. All right, and we're just going to tie this on the ribbon down here, right underneath our cactus. Plus, I find the twine, because it's a little bit, um, it has more tooth to it, I guess we could say. It's got more uh, fuzziness to it. Um, it's, I find it a little bit easier to tie. It doesn't get all loose and floppy. So, all right, we're going to trim up the ends. There's our little twine. And now we're going to add the sentiment. I forgot to make the inside of my card again tonight. You guys, I am really bad at remembering to make the insides of my cards. But I have some minis. I'm actually, I'm not even going to use the minis. Sometimes with these little teeny tiny sentiments, they're so skinny that I just take my minis or the big ones and I just cut a piece. Now I'm not going to use the whole thing because part of this is going to go on my circle. Put my stuff away in my little holder. So part of this is going to go on the circle. Let's look at this. This is going to go up here. Okay. Kind of where the, the line is. That's going to go up there. So I just want to put a little bit. Actually, I'm going to put it over here just a little bit. So we're going to put just a little bit of dimensional line on one side. And this is just because this is already on dimensionals. That circle is on dimensional. So we need to put dimensionals over here so that it um, it lines up. I'm going to try that before I take the back off. Let's see how it's going to work. Oh, that's going to be great. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Fun. So then we'll just take off the side. Deserts in Australia don't have tumbleweeds. Oh, you know, honestly, um, I, I've never been to the desert. <laughs> I've never really been. I, I went to Arizona once, but we were, um, we were in the city. So I've never really been to the desert. I've only seen the desert in pictures. It is definitely not the desert at my house. It is nothing but gray and rainy. 
So there's our little sentiment on there. You spice up my life. Isn't that cute? And we can go ahead and grab a piece of basic white. Let's, um, we'll do this really quick. Let's add, let's add some uh, chili pepper. Let's add a chili pepper to the inside, shall we? Um, grab my memento. Does that look right? <laughs> I don't know. All right, we're gonna color them. We're gonna color this. And hail this morning, oh my goodness, I don't think we had hail. We did not have hail here. We probably did have like sleet or something at some point in the middle of the night. You could kind of hear it. I haven't seen the sun in days. It's sad. I'd like to be in the desert because I feel like maybe there's sun. Maybe there's sun in the desert. All right, that ends a little bit worn out. So I'm gonna just come in and do the edges with the bullet tip. Color that all in, color, color. And let's do the other one. Oh, I'd love to go to Arizona again. I would love to go to Arizona right now. That would be fantastic. We briefly talked about going away for spring break um, to visit the sun, <laughs> but we decided not to. We're going on a big vacation this summer. Um, so we decided it really wouldn't be prudent, wouldn't be good to be going um, on vacation during spring break too. But ugh. I tell you, every winter, we always say that. We're like, we should go on vacation during spring break. We never do. We never do. There's always a reason. One of these days, though, because all right, the winter has not been cold here, but it's just been rainy. I don't know why I'm sitting here talking about the winter, about the uh, weather as I color. <laughs> huh. The weather is really not very exciting. So y'all tell me something fun. Um, I don't know, maybe about Taco Tuesday. Add a little bit more of the light poppy parade on here. There we go. And now we got to do the tops too. So let's come back in with some granny apple green. We'll do the tops. There we go. I feel like maybe the tops of peppers should be darker, but this color works. So you're going to Punta Gana soon. Oh. Oh, that sounds lovely. So, I am hoping that next year I will go to Mexico. <laughs> I'm working really hard, you guys. You know, I really don't talk about um, about my Stampin' Up! business because I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to make it about my business, right? I just want you guys to have fun. Um, but we can earn a trip. Mexico and I'm working really hard to try to get that trip to Mexico so I'm really hoping that next year I'm going to Mexico all right so here's the inside of my card I just put some multi-purpose glue on there and we're just gonna pop this inside oh so cute so adorable totes adorbs this would really be cute if you put like happy valentine's day in there too I don't have a happy valentine's day but I think this would make a great a great Valentine's Day card. You guys, I have more cards to show you too. You got a taco bar at your wedding reception. That's amazing. That is so much fun. All right. So here is this card. Isn't he fun? There's our cactus and the inside with our peppers. Super fun. You spice up my life. <laughs> like I said, I think this would be a great Valentine's Day card. Really fun. I think, you know, if you're making a Valentine's Day card for a guy, I feel like this, they might actually appreciate. <laughs> They'd at least laugh. It's got a little dad joke on the front. So, all right, let's look at the other cards I have. I think I just untied a bow on my card. Oh no, oh no, zoot, hello. All right, 
I just tried to rip that entire bow off my card. Well, let's retie it. And we can look at the guacamole card. Hopefully I can tie it almost as well. I can't believe I did that. All right. Oh, I did a good job. <laughs> Yay me. I'm going to pat myself on the back for that. I'm surprised I was able to retie that bow. <laughs> And now I have to completely chop it off. All right, so here is one card. This says, holy guacamole, it's your birthday. <laughs> and I stamped some little avocados on the background. Now this pattern paper, this is some of the um, in color designer series paper, six by six designer series paper. This comes in all of the color collections in these really fun patterns. And um, it's really great. So anytime you want something to match, that is good to have on hand because it's going to match. So there's our holy guacamole. It's your birthday. Now we also have the uh, guacamole card that I shared on Tuesday. So if you missed Tuesday's video with this fun envelope flap card, you might want to go back and watch that. And this one also has guacamole and it says you're not your average friend. Also, this would kind of be a fun um, friendship, a Galentine's Day card maybe. And then the inside. So that was really fun. That one I made on Tuesday. Which, you know, in case you missed it, I pulled it in again. And then we have this one that says spectacular. <laughs> spectacular, right? Um, and I did kind of the same thing, right? So I still use that basic border on the side. And I added some peppers and some limes um, in tone on tone in the poppy parade on there. So super fun. And I cut these out. I, the, I don't know if you can see the peppers kind of popped up just to do something kind of fun. And I added, of course, a little face, <laughs> a little face to our taco. I should have put one on the guac, I think, but what else? All right. So you guys, I'm so glad you like them. Yay, I'm so glad. Oh, thank you, Deb. Thank you all so much. And thank you for joining me tonight for our taco fiesta night. <laughs> Help me want some tacos. Um, and I hope that you grab this set because I, I love it. I think it's hilarious and fun and just great for so many things. So you like the flap? Oh, I'm so glad. All right. So thank you all for joining me tonight. Don't forget that next week, Tuesday, is our January card class, our January online card class. So if you registered and you ordered um, the card kit, those went in the mail this morning. So they're going to be there Monday, either Saturday or Monday, I think they all said. So those are coming in the mail to you. If you didn't register, that's okay. You can still come and hang out and watch. And then um, the tutorials will be available for sale on my website after the card class. So um, if you want to grab those afterwards, you can do that. Um, and I know some of you guys registered ahead of time uh, to get the tutorial bundles. And if you registered ahead of time, you're going to get the tutorials in advance. So those are coming your way too. So there are our taco cards, and I will see you next week. Oh, I didn't tell you what stamp set we're using next week. I forget things. We're using the Country Bouquet um, stamp set again. I think you're going to love the cards. So I will see you next week, Tuesday night. Have a fabulous weekend, and uh, eat some tacos. <laughs>